Boss fights have played a very important role in video games for many years. They're the thing that you fight at the end of the game, the thing that helps you make memories. Today, we will be looking at and counting down the top 20 boss fights in any 2D game. Let us begin. Number 20, Ultimate Evil from Splatterhouse 2. The first phase of this fight consists of the evil boss coming down and shooting flying heads at you that you can either kick or punch away. He'll repeat this until he turns into his final phase, where he turns into a bat and flies around in erratic patterns that are hard to dodge. Your best bet for this fight is to just stand still and punch. Number 19, The Grim Reaper from Castlevania. This fight would be higher on the list, but it is very short. The Grim Reaper jumps around throwing scythes at you that are hard to dodge because of the old and clunky controls on the NES. If you break the scythes, a heart will come out that you can use to replenish your HP. Number 18, Big Horn from The Binding of Isaac. This ugly horned beast comes out of the ground and shoots black orbs at you to kill you. His little minions also come out of the ground to either slap their faces on the ground trying to hit you or to throw bombs at you. Two minutes later, you're done. Range up. Number 17, Psychotherapist from Katana Zero. This extremely strange fight starts with you being grabbed by interdimensional ghost hands that come out of portals to attack you. Attack the hands, and you'll soon be on to the next phase. This phase includes you hitting back his orbs at him. The next phase includes you slashing all of his many, and I mean many, eyes out. In his final phase, he'll turn into a gruesome monster that will try to stab you with extremely hard to dodge needles.
Number 16, Vadi from The Legend of Zelda, The Minish Cap. This is one of the longest boss fights on this list. It is a hard boss fight that has multiple forms, each with their own difficulty. He first transforms into a tall sorcerer that has a couple of tricks up his sleeve. These include shooting laser beams from the small eyes that orbit around him, casting fire at you, and teleporting around the room. Destroying these eyes opens his weak spot. After this, he transforms into his next phase. This form mainly floats around, occasionally causing rocks to fall. He can also conjure purple spikes around the room and shoot energy balls at you. When he opens his eyes, they will turn red and be vulnerable to attack. Hit them all at the same time by cloning yourself to take this phase down. His next phase still floats around, shooting energy projectiles, and now causing his arms to emerge from the ground. You have to shrink yourself and go into the arms and destroy each of their core eyes. After this, he becomes more serious and charges up more blue energy balls that you can clone yourself and hit back at him. If less than four eyes are destroyed at a time, he will not be stunned, but will instead grow them right back.
Number 15. Propeller Knight. This knight will jab and dash at you, occasionally blowing you to the side or up. For most of this phase, you can just bounce on his head over and over again. When he gets in trouble, he will call in a flying pirate ship to shoot cannonballs at you that can destroy the battlefield. Number 14, the Matriarch. This giant slug looking beast is awful. In his first phase, blood and other smaller bugs shoot at you. In short, within seconds your entire screen will be filled with enemies and projectiles, barely giving you enough room to move. In his next form, this boss will turn into a slug creature that charges at you with its mouth open hoping to get a tasty bite of you. Number 13, Wily Machine. This boss takes up half the screen and shoots hard to dodge projectiles at you. In his next form, he will still fly around and shoot things at you, but now he's smaller. Overall, this fight is just really hard to deal with, so make sure you're very prepared when you're going into it.
Number 12, Yellow Devil. I'm starting to notice a theme with these old NES games. The bosses don't look hard, but the awful controls make them practically impossible. This boss is simple enough. He goes to one edge of the screen and shifts himself tile by tile across the screen. It doesn't look very hard, but boy is it. Number 11, The Enchantress. This evil sorcerer of death is terrible. Her first phase starts with her flying around shooting purple fireballs at you. You can hit these fireballs back to damage her. She will then set the ground on fire and you will have to stand on the ground that is, well, obviously not on fire. She can also break the ground, but her fire will replace it. After you damage her enough, she will start dashing around the screen. This cycle will repeat until either you die, or she gets damaged enough to transform into her final form. The first attack she can do in her final form is shooting two energy balls that move in an opposite wavy pattern. The next thing she can do is shoot a large stream of purple fire. The only way you can damage her in this form is to bounce on Shield Knight's shield, and then bounce on her.
Number 10, Nightmare from Metroid Fusion. Great idea, Nintendo. Make a boss that fills half the screen. Seriously, this boss is only hard because it fills most of your screen and then traps you in the corner. Bottom line, don't let yourself get cornered. Number 9, Undyne, Genocide from Undertale. This fight works differently from all the other Undertale fights. In this one, for some of the attacks, you're locked in one place with only a shield thingy to block all of the incoming arrows. For another attack, you're not locked in place, but harder to dodge arrows come from random directions.
Number 8, Balos from Cave Story. This monster has many forms. In the first form, he is still in mostly a human-ish form, and he will mainly just jump and dash at you. When he lands, bones will shoot out from the ground in a wave-like pattern. After you damage him enough, he will fly up into the air and then crash back down as a meteor, or a potato maybe? I don't really know. In this space, he will jump and bounce around, and you will have to dash under him. Keep shooting, and shoot. soon you'll be in the final phase. In this phase, a bunch of eyeballs pop out and begin to orbit him. Once you shoot all the eyeballs, he will turn into a bloody mess, and you will be able to damage him and bring him down quickly. Number 7, Grim Matchstick from Cuphead. Cuphead is notorious for being an extremely hard game, with tons of hard bosses and really cool 1920s cartoon looking graphics. But what is the hardest boss in Cuphead? The answer, Grim Matchstick. The first phase includes him either shooting fireballs that move in a really annoying sine wavy pattern, or shooting psychic beams from his eyes, the last of which is Terrible. His next phase includes him sticking his tongue out and letting fire minions jump at you. In his final phase, he will grow two more heads, one of which turns into a flamethrower. Just keep shooting though, and this boss will be dead quickly.
Number 6. Mission 6 from Blazing Chrome. This stupid fight has more phases than your average middle schooler. It starts with you in a room with a robot man that has a sword, shoots lasers at you, and can dash at you with his jetpack. This phase would be a challenging boss fight on its own, but wait, there's more. He can now do laser sword slashes and mega jumps. After you defeat this form, he will go into the background and become a huge mega robot that can shoot rolling energy balls out of his hands and laser geysers out of his eye. Keep shooting his head and soon he will release these two rotating octahedrons that you will have to shoot while dodging his other attacks. These octahedrons will also shoot lasers of their own for you to dodge. Once you do enough damage, you will be transported into the matrix where it almost crosses the line between 2D and 3D, but I'll allow it because all of your movement is still going on in two dimensions. You will have to shoot these weird bug creatures that come out of boxes and jump over spikes. Then you'll have to fight a ninja while jumping on platforms. When you defeat this guy, you're finally done. Number 5, Grey Prince Zote from Hollow Knight. And welcome back to another episode of Getting Your Butt Kicked Simulator. 
What do you have to say, Prince? That's right, absolutely nothing, because you're an idiot. Most of the time, he just falls down and accidentally creates a shockwave that somehow kills you. Even though it's just number 5 on the list, it definitely takes number 1 for most condescending boss fight ever. He just randomly blunders around, tripping over his own feet. Also, there are these stupid little bug things that attack you independently of the prince. Overall, this is just a really hard boss fight. Number 4, Nightmare King Grimm from Hollow Knight. This fight wouldn't be nearly as hard if he didn't teleport away so quickly right after his attack is finished. It makes it so you're limited to at most one hit per attack, and that's not even guaranteed. Getting hit even just once can throw off your rhythm so much that it sends you cascading into a downward spiral of sensory overload before you just give up and watch yourself die. In this fight, tempo really matters. Once you get a good rhythm for dodging his attacks, all you have to do is attack him. Number 3, Omega Flowey from Undertale. Flamethrowers, ninja stars of death. <sighs> just just play the video.
Number two, Absolute Radiance from Hollow Knight. Oh my goodness, chicken nuggets on a surfboard. This fight is tough. If you've managed to make it this far, you've already fought every single other boss in the game, back to back. This boss has it all, annoying teleportation, swords that are spaced out just enough to be the most uncomfortable thing in the world to dodge, projectiles that have AI that is literally smarter than you are, and to top it all off, if you die, you'll have to fight every single boss in the game over again. In every phase, you have less and less room to work with, up until the final phase that has you playing hopscotch between just two platforms. In short, you're gonna die. A lot. Number one, Sans from Undertale. Trust me, you're gonna have a really bad time. <laughs>
Thank <laughs> you. 